Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another great edition of my Guru Room Show. And for the Guru Room Show today, we got a very awesome guest, and he is a mu musician, model, and an athlete, a, a basketball guy. And his name is William Higgins. And he has a couple songs out. One is 1973 and the other is Fine Wine. So we're going to talk to him about his music, about his, his sporting days, and about his modeling. I am Rocco Cross. I am the host at Stutters. I am the host of The Guru Room. And my interview with William Higgins will be coming up very soon. And as always, welcome to my nightmare. Stay tuned. Okay, um, welcome to Gru, and thank you so much for taking time out of your, it looks like morning over there, but th thanks for taking time out of your night. <laughs> yeah, well, it is, I'm in San Diego, so it's the afternoon, it's like 3.30, but thank you so much for having me on your show, I'm really excited for the conversation we're going to have. Oh my God, yeah, definitely, like like we were talking before we came on, we were talking about films that are uh, cult cult classics and i mentioned brandon lee's film the crow and and yeah. you told me about the horror movie you recently watched which is like that that movie creeped the shit out of me when i first saw the descent all those yeah. creatures in the well with the girls going down oh my god <laughs> i know <laughs> that movie yeah i've been taking a class on cult classics and uh we just watched the descent that's what it's called last week and mm -hmm. it's literally just these people going in uh, into caves they're trying to discover caves and I won't spoil it but um yeah there's a lot of creepy things going on down there so <laughs> that's that's what that's what I meant to say cave not well they're yeah they're yeah, yeah. Not in a well they're in a cave that, that yeah <laughs> yeah and they're actually it's all paper like I was learning about the set and it's all um paper mache it's not like actual caves obviously but they're like rearranging these paper mache really uh, objects and making it look like different parts of the cave so i thought that was pretty cool yeah oh my god it's so awesome yeah now yeah cool. now see i i got my horror films mixed up like the scent is based in 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 the cave the 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 thing with the weld i was thinking of did you ever hear of a horror movie ring it sounds like, very I, like it, it? it was like a japanese horror film and then they made it and uh, American film, they like redone it over and made an American film ring. It's called like the the okay. ring, like oh R I N G. Wait. I saw this such a long time ago. I think I was yeah, I was super young. I've seen this though. That was one of my favorite movies. Yeah, that that's that's the girl coming out of the well. That's that's what I was thinking of the well. Like remember the creepy oh. girl with the with the hair covering her face and and she climbs out of the well and she climbs out of the TV and <laughs> yeah yeah the TV. I told I remember bits and pieces of it because I watched it such a long time ago. But that was a good one. I'm gonna have to revisit that. That was, that was good. I forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Like it, since you're taking class about like cult classics definitely watch the crowd like that yeah talk about like a cult classic like everything that happened with that movie and brandon lee of course like getting dying on set and and you know it's just it's like it's crazy everything wow. surrounding that movie and and it was weird because the movie was made in like 1994 i think it was really and Right after that movie came out, the way he dresses with the white face with the black lines in it, and everyone started dressing goth then, like that, like I that's oh. like almost what set like that big goth craze, and everyone dressing all black and painting their face white with the black lines and the lipstick. And wow, so that's something that kind of kick started the whole uh goth trend, kind of a little bit. Oh, definitely, yeah, definitely wow okay i'll have to watch that yeah that one sounds interesting oh uh, yeah you'll love it like there's action throughout 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 like the whole the whole film like it's it's really good yeah yeah i've been trying to watch one movie a day sometimes two um so i'll have to watch that i'll watch it tonight probably so <laughs> <laughs> it sounds okay good. Yeah. I, I don't know do you follow wrestling at all wrestling like what like uh like WWE, WWE and all that stuff. Yeah. Ah, uh, not not as much as I probably um, should. Why? 
Well, no, one of the wrestlers. Did you ever hear of one of the the, the big wrestlers, Sting? The wrestler, not not, not the singer. <laughs> oh, wait, his name is Sting. Yeah, it sounds familiar. I've never heard of him though. Like, I can't yeah, like, think of what he looks like. He based his like gimmick off of the crow. He painted his face white with the black lines and <laughs> really <Yeah. Dang. laughs> the crow has a big big cultural significance then. Wow. I'm surprised exactly. I haven't seen <laughs> so, so you know, I I guess we should start talking about you. Like this isn't an interview to plug the crow, right? <laughs> no, I guess so. We're over here plugging the crow. It's a good conversation though. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. uh, I, <laughs> I see you're uh, you're really big into sports and and you you played sports in school right yeah absolutely so my whole life I played basketball my dad coached basketball at Fresno State in Ole Miss so I've always been around basketball I wanted to be a coach actually my whole life up until oh. up until now I found acting and that's, that's kind of my, and music, that's kind of my passion right now. So I'm, I'm pursuing that, but pretty much, yeah, I played basketball my whole life. Um, I played junior college at San Diego city. And for this past couple of years, I've been trying to walk on at uh, UC San Diego and uh, just be around the team as much as possible and help in any way. But yeah, so that's my experience with basketball. And I, I, I just got to, special place in my heart for sure wow yeah i saw the video like um with michael's michael's page is the the, the yeah the, the, where michael where, abrams where, yes shout out michael abrams that's how um we connected actually I just, I just signed with him he's a fantastic amazing down to earth i i can't there's not enough words in the dictionary to explain him he's been a blessing for real but yeah michael's page you're saying yeah, yeah, with, with your video where you're you're walking, you're twirling the basketball around <laughs> your finger, and yeah, that, that, that was that was some really good stuff. Thank you, thank you. I can't take full credit for it. Um, my girlfriend who was filming this, it was a slate shot that we're putting up for um, just like for you know different act, like reels and for mm-hmm. actor access things. So my girlfriend said you should spin the ball on your finger and throw it off the wall and just be yourself. And I was, cause I was being a little too tense. I was like, uh, but yeah, I can't take full credit for it. It was all her. And then I did that and it worked out well. He loved it. So that's the story on that. <laughs> oh, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Okay. So who is your team for basketball? Like what, what's your favorite team? Ah, <sighs> that's a tough one because if I say this, I get a lot of uh, scrutiny for it, but not, maybe not necessarily now, but okay. I tend to be, a, I do tend to be a bandwagon. So uh, I, I'll admit that right now. I, I like, I always love LeBron. So I always follow him obviously, but mm-hmm. um, the Clipper, the Clippers are my team, except I liked them the most when there was Paul, uh, not Paul George. He's on there now, but I liked yeah. them the most when they had Blake Griffin Chris Paul, DeAndre Jordan, um, Jamal Crawford, just all that team was what made me be like, yeah, it's the Clippers. And ever since then, I feel I haven't latched on to a team as much since that, which is very, uh, it's tragic because I love basketball, but I just can't like, I can't get involved with a team as much anymore since that team. I just loved them. The charisma, the energy, I loved it. Yeah, nice, nice. I gotta go. I gotta go with the Clippers. Okay, okay, there you go. And and yeah. while we're still talking about basketball, like you were part of the launch of a video game, right? NBA Two K. Now yes, that's, yes. that's awesome because those two two K games, no matter what sport it is, like everyone plays them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I I played that game my whole entire life. That was my childhood literally me and my friends we'd come home from school and we'd fight over who gets to play because there would be three of us us three best friends and you can only play two and so we'd be like fighting over who gets the remote and everything but yeah that was a really cool project to get to be a part of um just I, I couldn't imagine 
that even being like back when I first started this last March, I could not imagine being able to be a part of that. Like, I'm still just like, I don't, when you're saying it, I'm like, it doesn't sound like I was. And it was a very small part. Like, but even that, I'm just, I'm thankful for that opportunity. You know, it's, <laughs> it's uh, I don't know. It's just cool to be a part of something bigger, which is kind of why I started acting in the first place. And so to see myself on that, I was like, it kind of, it was cool to see, to say the uh, least. Yeah, definitely for sure. I, I, I mean, you, you know, you, you can always say now to your friends when you're playing the game, oh, I was part of the launch. You know, I was yeah. a little part of it, but I was still part of the launch. I was still a part of that thing you guys are playing. <laughs> yeah, no, it was cool. And they had um, Jack Harlow was on set. They had a couple basketball players, uh, Zach Levine, Chet Holmgren. Um, it was just, it was surreal. But for about four hours, it was four hours of filming and four hours we had to shake these water bottles that were open and just splat like they would splash everywhere because we had to act like we won like a championship and you just splash this water everywhere and get all hyped you're like yeah yeah and then they'd be like cut and then they come out and they mop it up for about 20 minutes they would mop up the water and we're all just sitting there like there's got to be a better way a better way to do this and then they'd mop it up dry it off with like these hand dryers yeah. And then we do it again and start shaking the water for 30 seconds. And oh then my God. It, it was crazy, but it, it turned out really cool. The director was, he was good. So. <laughs> oh yeah. my God. I love it. I love it. Luckily, no one, no one, no one fell during filming. <laughs> I don't think, actually, I think someone did because we we're, we we're standing on these, uh, these bleachers <laughs> and it was all wet and someone gets up yeah. and like slips. But oh they played my it God. Off. Yeah, they played it off really well. So, Good. yeah, it was it was all right. <laughs> Nobody got hurt. <laughs> yeah. And when we were messaging one another, and and I, it turns out, you know, you're a big rock and roll fan, just just like me. And you were yeah. telling me recently, you just started listening to Black Sabbath and Ozzy, right? Yeah, just recently, like I think it was last month or something. I just started. It was uh my sister sent me a song um called Orchid and I started trying to play it on guitar. I haven't learned it yet, but I just I think it's a beautiful song. I don't know. I've been getting into that. I've always loved rock and roll. Uh, my mom at a young age, young age introduced me to like Metallica. Um I remember hearing the song One. Oh my like, god, I love that song. Yes. That's my favorite probably favorite song one of them of all time by them I was I was just mesmerized by it and so yeah I've been getting I love rock and roll I love uh classic rock I love just all types of rock I mean all of it I love it all it's it's good it just makes you want to yes definitely. <laughs> and you you definitely have 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 to hear for 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 for, for head banging too like I saw you just now like your hair was flying all over when you were doing yeah, it yeah I know <laughs> I know. Uh, I need to get a haircut. It's, it's starting to get out of hand. No, no, it looks looks great. You know, especially if you're going to see a band play. That you know, if if you get your hair cut, your hair won't be flying everywhere. Then true. That is true. I guess <laughs> it won't. It won't. It won't feel as cool if my hair was just cut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is that is that your favorite like? like Ozzy or Black Black Sabbath song like what what would you say is like is your favorite one That one's definitely up there um Okay so Ozzy just he did a song with one of my current like modern favorite artists Post Malone and it's called oh. It's called Take What You Want From Me or Take What You Want I just love that like I love when like older artists mixed with modern artists and it comes together to form a, a new type of sound i just think that's sick so oh definitely like yeah i think that might be one of my favorite which i don't i don't know if that's like good or bad because people might be like oh like he has way better stuff you know obviously but i don't know that's just my favorite personally but ever to each their own well yeah yeah definitely definitely <laughs> 
And, and then you were, you, you were even asking me if I, if I saw that, that rock and roll film dirt, you know, the crew. Yeah. Dirt for a uh, Motley crew. Oh my God. Like when I watched that movie, I was like, I always heard the stories about the band and I, I've seen them live. And I think wow. that's my favorite band. Like Vince Neil now, his voice is kind of shot, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but like, when I saw them live, like years, 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 years ago, and they were, they, they, they were like, Oh my God. And they were like my favorite band when their songs came out. I love them. So oh, of course, when the movie came out, I'm like, I have to see it. it's my favorite yeah. band. And it didn't disappoint me. It was all the stories they said, I kind of knew because I, I read the book too. And, but yeah. like just seeing oh, it on the screen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't know they even had a book. What, I'm gonna have to read that. Yeah, the book's what? called. The, it's the same Dirt? title. Yeah. Is it? Ba- is it like adapted? Was the movie adapted from the book? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know that. Okay. What? <laughs> I'm a fake fan. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> no, but I love the movie. It was a great movie. Um, it, it was so good. Oh my god! Like j- just the stuff. Like the the wild parties and Nikki six dying and coming back to life. And <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. I, it had machine gun Kelly in it. I thought his yeah. role was, very, was funny. It was like a comedic relief. Um, yeah. Oh, it was the gun Kelly was the uh, top was Tommy Lee. Yeah. He was Tommy Lee. <laughs> he was like, ah, it was cool. I love when he, he always like flips his drums and he's just, He's so uh, hardcore. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that and, movie was good. You know, me, Machine Gun Kelly like did a really good, good, good job playing Tommy Lee, and and I mean he he looked exactly like him when Tommy Lee was younger. Yeah, it's. I think it's good that um, he got good reviews. I guess from people that like Motley Crue in mm-hmm. itself uh playing tommy lee because like sometimes it's hard to play a character or people will be like oh they didn't do him justice or it's not yeah. that's not even close but I, I thought he did good too and i'm glad to hear that you think same as well oh, yeah. Because, yeah 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 he, he did great yeah and i thought it was cool someone else looked really good as tommy lee i was going through your photos and i saw you dressed as tommy lee was <laughs> whoa you're you're good you're good at your research uh, yeah that was like a last minute costume idea i don't know it was for halloween and yeah. i'm the type of person who always plans like oh i'm gonna be this this and this and then i the day of i don't have anything i didn't buy anything <laughs> And so I go to Party City and I'm like, okay, I want to be a rock star. And so I get yeah. like a wig and I find a wig and I'm like, oh, there's a, this will work. And I just throw it all together. And I'm like, what, what rock star? And I'm like, okay, uh, I'll be Tommy Lee. And so I just say I'm Tommy Lee. I don't know. But that picture you're referring to, I don't even, yeah. I have like a guitar or like a bass. It doesn't even make sense, but um, I don't know. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> You look really good. Like I was looking, I was like, "Wow!" I said, "I said, okay." I said, "Yeah, you look really good, Tommy Lee." It would have been awesome if you could have got like more friends to be the band. Someone play Vince and Nikki and Mick and. I know, I know, but honestly, I would have wanted to play uh, Mickey. I think or Nikki. I would have wanted. I don't know. I should have got some friends to play. I guess to play Vince and all them, but. Yeah, that would have been cool. <laughs> it was just a blur. It was so last last minute. But maybe next year, maybe next year I could get a whole squad together. We'll exactly. You could either do do the crew or you could do like Ozzy. You could dress as Ozzy, put like the black, black, black eyeliner around your eyes and <laughs> Yeah. That'd be that'd be funny. <laughs> and um have which 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 bands do you like to see live like have you ever went and saw like any live acts concerts or anything uh i've never i've seen literally like three total concerts um i've never seen like actual people that i wanted to go see i only (laughs) saw people that like my friends were like oh we have to go and so i was just 
I would just tag along, but yeah, I wanted to see, um, like, I wish I could see the, could have seen the Rolling Stones. Um, like my favorite band is Fleet of all time is Fleetwood Mac. Oh, really? Yeah. Which is a surprise to a lot of people. Yeah. I, oh my, Stevie Nicks, like voice of an angel. Um, she's so good. This is amazing. I don't know. They're just whole, their whole vibe. All their songs are good. They can switch it up. They can sing a sad song. Like uh, my favorite is Storms by them. Yeah. That, was, that was my most listened to song of uh, last year on Spotify. Storms by uh, oh my God. Mac. Yeah. Uh, I promise I'm not like sad or anything. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a sad person, but I don't know. I just like listening to that. It's relaxing. And then um, so Fleetwood Mac, The Rolling Stones. Who else? I have a whole playlist of, it's called 1970s California, and it's just all types of uh, rock and roll, classic rock from that era, so. Sweet. Um, yeah, yeah, but that's my favorite genre of music for sure. Oh, wow. Well, you know, it's not, the Rolling Stones are still touring. You could definitely go go see them. Like, yeah. they, they aren't slowing down, and, and Stevie Nicks right now is on like a, a salt, solo tour i think she's on tour with billy billy joel i think it is she's on tour are you serious yeah (laughs) no way Uh i just tried to learn a billy joel song on the piano when i whipped my piano out that was a song i tried to i think it was billy joel yeah it was it was a it's called v vienna i tried to learn that it's it's a good one it's just like it's very mellow but dang okay i'll have to go watch one of them i mean <laughs> somebody if they're all on tour still yeah yeah stevie's so good live like i i stole her live too oh my god she, she's amazing live like like you would love you would love it like she's she she just started going i i think her tour starts during during the summer like if, if she really? comes anywhere near you, you 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 should go see her like she's amazing live i'm there <laughs> I, got, I gotta look up tickets now hopefully it's not sold out or anything because i know every like a lot of people love her so i'm like yeah definitely and especially she's on the same bill as as billy as billy joel so <laughs> yeah where where are you located are you in, what part are you, are you in new york philadelphia philadelphia okay yeah. okay Dang, I was gonna say we will have to catch a show together or something. Hell, I'm down. I'm down. Hey, I'll fly out to Philly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll I'll take take you out for the the famous Philly Philly cheesesteak, right? <laughs> I love I love me a good Philly cheesesteak. I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you also do your own music, and I saw like you have a couple songs, right? And what yeah. in, in inspired you to write and make 1973 and fine wine? Ooh. Um, well, to be honest, 1973 was partially like real experience, partially just kind of a made up character. Like not all of my songs are from experience. Sometimes okay. I make up, I make up a, like if I see a movie or, um, or I just make a character in my head and I'm like, what would this character be going through? How, how, how are they feeling? Um, and then I kind of like project myself onto that character and make the song. So for 1973, um, I think my girlfriend was like going to do an internship on the East Coast in D.C. And I was, uh, okay. yeah, I was we were kind of just, you know, both both sad because we were like, dang, this is going to be six months. Like, how are we going to yeah. do it? And so. I just imagined that and then I also incorporated like how would a character feel if in five months say their girlfriend were gone having like like I think the song lyrics are um you probably think that I care you probably think that I care about your new friends you probably think that I care about that new bins and it's just like her moving on to a better life and like better (sighs) things and at the end of it I'm just like well I do um I do care about that and it's I don't know it's kind of just to show like I do still care about you so that's where I took that song and then that's honestly one of my favorite ones too um I still feel that my music which 
tomorrow I'm actually meeting with the producer. So this problem will be solved by tomorrow. But um, I feel that it's lacking a good quality production because I'm I'm just producing it myself, basically. Oh, okay. Um, and mixing it and all that. And so I, I reached out to someone and we connected well. And so tomorrow I'm going to a studio to get everything like just top notch quality. Cause I feel like that's, that's uh, what I want to put out to the world. I want the best yeah. quality of music. Um, and then fine wine was just kind of just, um, I don't know. It's just a fun song. I wanted to mix rap with a little bit of pop with the little bit of like the ending is like a chorus, like a Justin Timberlake type song. Okay. Okay. He's one of my inspirations. I, I really like his music, especially his outros of songs. They're yeah, just very, yeah. very just like, they make you just want to like do this, you know, not necessarily up and down, but it's more like a, like a, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a side to side thing, like groovy. Um, so yeah, that's with fine wine. And um, that's basically where I went with both of those. Those are two songs that I'm proud of though. Yeah. So thanks for mentioning those. Yes, yeah, sweet. I see you even got your, your little your little dance moves going. So so you can make a music video and do and do, yeah. do some dancing. I know we could, <laughs> you're recording this. I might use the the video from this for a music video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> just kidding. Just hey, kidding. hey, you can if you want to make a music video out of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So you're giving me the rights all right all right I'm yeah good. definitely yeah i'm i'm very easy i uh, anything that could help someone <laughs> no i can tell this uh this conversation so far has been a pleasure so thank you for <laughs> having me on the show and i love talking oh my, to you rocco cross oh my god yeah like you're really awesome like i'm 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 really having fun you know, <laughs> talking it, it it just feels like it's like friends t- chatting right? you know <laughs> and we just we haven't even met in person yet, but we just first time like actually talking today. So it's, yes, that's it's been good. Oh, it's been yeah. good. I, I, I mean, you know, anyone who loves rock and roll and horror movies like D, <laughs> D, D, D Scent and The Ring and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I saw some some of your pictures, too. Like, do you also do like shoots photo shoots and all that yeah so primarily uh yeah i've been doing photo shoots like i got to do a i got to do a cool photo shoot for reebok last month and that was really cool i do photo shoots on my own kind of just for just the overall vibe i like getting friends to go out and just take cool photos it's a way of expressing like an artistic vision and i feel that you know, art is, is what makes all of us unique. It's what makes us like beautiful. We get to express ourselves without necessarily having to say anything. And uh, from any type of art, painting, photography, photo shoots, Mm -hmm. interviewing, I think it's all different types of creative outlets. So yeah, I think it's more of just like a way of creating things. I found that about myself. I like to create a lot. So photo shoots are one way of doing that. Um, I like modeling, but I'm more so into acting just because nothing against modeling. I do think there's a talent of it in its own. However, I feel that personally for me, I want to be able to bring a little more to the table, bring more, um, nuance, I guess, to like with a character and acting, you get to like you get to tell a story, you get to bring in your own version of it and necessary, like with uh, modeling or taking photo shoots, you get to yes. do that if you're the creative director, but if you're just the model, there's only so much you can do True. Um, where it's just kind of like sur- more surface level than what I would want to be doing. But I do, I do appreciate that as well. So yeah, I do modeling as well and photo shoots. Cool. Oh, wow. See, you you do a little bit of everything, huh? From music to modeling to acting yeah. to basketball, like the you, yep. you play piano, guitar, like damn, yeah. you 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 definitely have your hands on everything. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it's always been like that. Uh since a kid, I've just for some reason I've always found these little like 
these I've had a knack for finding these hobbies and some of them yeah. stick some of them don't like in 10th grade i was obsessed with solving rubik's cubes <laughs> nice i don't know what it was i love <laughs> rubik's cubes yo-yos um yeah yeah definitely yeah i don't know why i don't i really don't know what it is but those four things have stuck you know acting basketball modeling uh and especially music so mm -hmm. yeah yeah i have my hands full I know. I see that. Wow. <laughs> and I, I, I just noticed that you have the record of Thriller of Michael Jackson, and I, I see that up there. That's Boom. awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, one of my favorite records of all time. I just got a record player this um, this last summer, and that was the first record I got. And it was, it was only five dollars which i thought was a steal and then yeah. i found out i found out it was partially like scratched uh -oh. after i bought it and so it doesn't sometimes it like gets stuck and he'll be he'll be like beat it beat it beat it and it's like dude and it's just going back and forth and i'm like what is happening right now so, <laughs> yeah but i love michael jackson that is one of my favorite artists of all time um i know he he obviously like had his problems of his own and went through a lot yeah. of things. Um, but besides that, just the cultural impact he had on everyone and his oh, music, definitely. like that is a dream. That's a dream role I would love to play one day um, because believe it or not, I am actually mixed ethnicity as well. Um, okay. I don't know. If, I don't know if I look it to you or not, but I think Michael Jackson, you know, with his mixed ethnicity and mm -hmm. um, his ability, his ability to just impact both cultures in such a way, I think that would be a cool role to play one day. So, oh, I, yeah. you know, I couldn't even tell. Like, with, with um, with, with, with mix are, are you? Yeah, I'm a, a quarter African American. I am uh, like 13% Native American and then the rest uh, Caucasian. So, oh, wow. yeah, I'm, I'm, little bit of a mix i'm from oklahoma and oh, uh, really yeah i'm from lawton oklahoma actually i'm not from here in california but okay okay yeah there's a lot of uh native american presence out there too and so i'm looking to go back there soon one day and just be able to get in touch with my roots a little more yeah but, definitely yeah but so like you traded up the farmland for the, for city life, right? <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, there's not, I wouldn't, you know, where I'm from, there's really not even much farmland. It's literally just oh, really? dead. It's just, it's like just dead grass everywhere. Oh. Well, I guess in the, around this time, it's very green and I love it. Um, and my grandparents' house was, it was like, they had a barn in the back and everything. So I guess, yeah, I went from kind of the country to uh, city life. But yeah. um, I also went to Fresno, California for most of my life. So that okay. was, it's there. It's like a agricultural, a big agricultural center for California. So I'm not too unfamiliar with it now. But, oh man, sweet, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, giving you like my my whole life story <laughs> and you 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 mentioned you like to act like ha, have have yeah. you done anything with acting or some or i don't know if you're allowed to talk about it like have have have, have you done anything with it yeah um i'm not so that's how i met michael abrams my amazing manager um who i just signed with and then um I met, so what happened was I kind of got into the acting realm. I was scrolling on my Instagram one, or I knew I wanted to act. Like yeah. I've always kind of known. So I was scrolling on my Instagram and I saw this ad that said like, you could be the next, the next big thing, like sign up now and for $999. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll try it. But I didn't have, I didn't have any money to do it. So I kind of just, I had a feeling like I'm going to do this, but I'm, at the end of the day i'm not gonna be able to pay so then like once they start saying okay like are you serious about this you want to pay i was like oh i can't 
but then they kind of thankfully they're like look um you know we believe in you like and mm-hmm. which i'm very thankful for because they let me kind of go to a showing a showcase in front of yeah. agents um for a reasonable amount of money that i had because i could not pay what they were asking but they were very generous and very um i'm just thankful for them and so i got in front of an agent got to got to do a monologue oh, wow. and and then eventually it led to getting auditions and i got an audition for the a couple commercials this past year yeah um and then finally i what i'm most proud of is this independent film that's supposed to be coming out hopefully this year um it's called the art of love okay. and yeah that's where i met i think have you interviewed dakota lotus yes yeah yeah you did right okay uh-huh. yeah um so, or i'm asking that i know you interviewed dakota lotus i watched the i watched it. I don't, <laughs> i'm a liar i don't know why i'm lying right now but I know, I know you were you were, you were you were you were probably testing me to see if I remembered the interview, right? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to put you in an uncomfortable situation if you're like, uh, who's the Dakota? But no, yes, amazing Dakota Lotus. I met him on set, and we were playing each other's best friends, and we just literally became best friends like overnight. Like, really? Yeah, I consider him one of my closest friends. Oh wow! To this day, and I only met him for a, a week of yeah. filming and we just really hit it off and now we're just super close friends and I'm really grateful for him because he's a he's a genuine person like it's it's kind of hard to find people that are like him I guess in this mm-hmm. industry where they're kind of you know like a lot a lot of times people get success and they they tend to if they don't need you then they don't there's it's true if they don't need you, there's no point in them talking to you or, you know, interacting with you. And I feel that uh, Dakota is the type of person who no matter what success he garners, he's always going to be um, genuine and make time for you. And that's the same as well for Michael Abrams. He he's really he's really shown me that as well, like that you make time for uh, people that and you make a priority of the people you care about. And so, yeah, I met Dakota on set of The Art of Love. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling. I just like. Oh no, no, no! This is this is this is good. I, this is good. I like this. No, I tend to do that. Like, I'll talk about one thing and then it'll lead me to another. And so you're probably like, "Where is this guy going with this?" No, no, no! I'm I'm in enjoying talking talking to you. Like, like, yeah, this is this this is awesome. Thank you, but <laughs> thank you. Sorry about that. So yeah, I got to film that. I can't. I don't think I could talk too much about. Oh um, well, yeah about like any specifics i'm sure i could like tell you dakota's in it and um, mm-hmm. i'm really excited for it to come out and it is going to be amazing it brushes over um just opioid crisis in america wow. and um the use of drugs and the situation of homelessness in oh, wow. uh, the united states and i think it'll shed light on a lot of uh the realities and the cruelty and the harshness of it that you know, people we see on, on the side of the street, they're, they're genuine, real people. And yeah, I think it, it'll be a really good coming of age story about that and showing people like these people have also have had families and lives. And so I really, I'm really excited for it. Like it's, it should be coming out soon. So uh, hopefully then we can, we can meet up again and talk about it a little oh more. My God, yeah, definitely. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll bring you both on so you could talk about you and D- D- yeah. Dakota. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be great. Honestly, we both should do a, like a little group chat. Right, cool. exactly. That would that would be that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, that would definitely be a lot of fun. Totally. Yeah, we should. Oh, and by the way, while we're on the topic topic of Dakota, he's dropping a song in like I believe it's like two weeks. So uh, everybody, stay tuned because this man is literally like generational talent that man is he's, he can do he's he really do good anything. he is yeah he so is. i'm excited really for his song yeah so sweet sweet <laughs> yeah and i noticed you're drinking an an iced coffee are you a, are you more of a coffee guy or tea guy oh i'm a big coffee guy i can't lie i'm okay it's it's starting to get bad though because um <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm already a I night owl. I have a problem. <laughs> I really think I do. I think I do. Like, I've been trying to drink more tea, uh, more like yerba mates. Um, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that, like coffee makes me so just ang- ah, like antsy, I guess. And Yeah, no, been, it does. It does. And then sometimes I'll drink like two to three a day. And that's just, it's really, it makes you just, I'll be shaking. Uh, <laughs> So it's bad, but yeah, I've been drinking yerba mates and those are, they're pretty, uh, like more mellow. It's very, it has the same effects, but I feel like it's not as jittery. Okay. Okay. Big, big coffee drinker though. How about you? Are you more cold? I mean, I, sh- I should be more of a tea drinker, but I'm not, I'm definitely more yeah. coffee than tea. And so, yeah. Yeah. I feel I feel we all we all wish we drank a little more tea than coffee and water. I need to drink more water. I don't drink enough, but <laughs> yeah, I'm know. the same way. I'm lucky if I drink like one bottle a day. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Tell me about it. Me too. And yeah. and and if I drink like a bottle of water, I have to get like the the lemon juice and and, and squirt it in there. You don't like the taste of water? <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like dirt <laughs> i know right I, yeah i don't i don't either but sometimes i just deal with it yeah I, true i don't know <laughs> that's funny and, and and with coffee i love the flavored stuff too like vanilla latte and all that stuff and so yeah I, yeah that's what i have right now a vanilla latte <laughs> oh really <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, let me let me read my order it's a Okay, it's a vanilla latte with two pumps of vanilla, but then I put in four pumps of this toffee nut syrup. Okay. It's just beautiful. It, I don't, I can't explain it. I love it. <laughs> All right. I, you, you know, when I go back to Starbucks, I'm, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to ask, I'm going to yep. ask for it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Get that. The toffee nut syrup. <laughs> and, um, and what do you what do you like i i saw your photos you're definitely in r- really really good shape so what do you do what do you do to stay thank in shape you. thank you <laughs> um what do i do man <laughs> i love playing basketball so i feel that already kind of you know that helps keep me fit keeps my mind sharp and um so that's one thing me, me and my friends kind of go to the gym sometimes and we, we lift weights. Um, <laughs> I lift weights. <laughs> yeah, we, we lift weights. I mean, overall, I just feel like it's important to take care of your body and to make sure yeah. that, um, cause I don't know, whenever my mind is like feeling scattered, I feel like exercise helps me with that as well. So I don't know. I just, I like going to the gym and exercising, working out my body, um, uh, oh, I've been introduced to a sauna lately, and that has been very, ah. very relaxing. You just sit there, and you're already burning calories. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, sweat so, it out. Exactly. You just sweat yeah. it all out. So I love that. Hot yoga. Hot yoga Hot is... Hot yoga? It can be miserable your first time doing it. Like, I'm not I'm not lying. I went to one, the, uh, uh, like, two, two, three weeks ago, and... I had to exit the room. It was crazy. Like there were all these like 50, 60 year old people in there just doing it. Cause they start moving too. Like they start doing like some type of like Pilates. I had to leave and you're not supposed to leave the room. You're supposed to stay in there. And I I was seeing stars. I was like, (laughs) I couldn't see where I was. I went in the bathroom and I laid down on the floor. I didn't care. I was like, I think I passed out. I I think that's can be (laughs) deemed as passing out i really did it was crazy but other than that experience hot yoga has been very very good in maintaining shape and uh just the physicality of it so yeah 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 the the first time i ever went into like a steam room sauna like i i went in there and like 10 minutes in i ran out i'm like i can't breathe i can't do this (laughs) that was me i 
I don't blame you. That that's the exact experience that I had as well. So yeah, it'll do that to you. Every everyone else was in there, like just laying on the bench, and they're, they were in there for like twenty minutes, thirty minutes, and and all covered in sweat. And and I went in there for ten minutes and ran. Yeah, I remember one of the guys start laughing at at at, at me because I was running out saying I can't breathe, I can't breathe, and and he just like busted out laughing. They're, they're like, this guy is tripping out. What is like? Didn't he he signed up for it when he walked in? Why is he not expecting it? <laughs> No, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it it took me a, a few times to get get used to yeah. it, and so yeah. Exactly. Once you get used to it, I mean, it's it's smooth sailing. But that first two three times, it's torture. It's, oh it's my really god! Bad. I know, I know, it really is. Like, 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 I literally couldn't breathe. Like, I was panicking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, you know, I always ask guests this, as you can see, with all the horror stuff in the background. What are some horror movies that you like? Well, obviously, the one I mentioned earlier, The Descent, mm -hmm. that one was crazy. Uh, what one have I just... I'm trying to think of any that I've seen in the past. I Okay, so I love Jordan Peele, how he mixes horror with uh, yes. comedy. Yeah, I, I think I really don't understand how he does it. It's like what I know I've seen an interview by him that said every like comedy and humor both rely on t like the timing of like when you show the the scary character creeping up behind the person like that quick shot yes. of the character, you know, like it all re relies on timing the same with the punchline of a joke. It's all timing. So I love Jordan Peele's films. Um when I get out, I could watch that like mm -hmm. one. I could watch that once a week and find new little nuances in it that I didn't see the week before. Um, just like, like the, I la I watched that last week, Get Out, and I didn't understand like the resemblance of this deer getting killed. I never okay. even, I didn't even think of it. And then watching it last week, I kind of understood like, wow, like what the deer is. Uh, resembles and how he yeah, used yeah, that, yeah. that same deer to kill the people at the end of the it's just like little things like that i love his films so jordan anything jordan peele um what else have i seen dang it <laughs> he's like dang it <laughs> i know i feel like i have a lot like too many movies in my head i can't even narrow <laughs> I can't even narrow them down. Like it's a problem. I really do watch. <laughs> I watch so many movies a day. I just got introduced to this app called Letterboxd. Have you heard of it? Oh, I did. I yes, yes, I did hear of that. Yep. I think it's like sick. Like you could <laughs> watch a movie, send it to a friend, rate it, like it, mm -hmm. and then you can also add all these movies to your watch list. Like, oh, I'm using my phone, so I can't grab my phone. But <laughs> um, I'm like looking for my phone. It's up on the. <laughs> Like, but yeah so there's a lot of different films but those are definitely like get out um and then the descent that one was crazy that that's that, yeah that's insane that movie <laughs> yeah so i don't know what is your what is your favorite horror film oh man like um you know i, I like slashers like eight you know freddie jason michael and all that but oh, like really? my, yeah my my favorite like horror movie is actually like like an like an old 80s horror film it's called night of of the de the demons night of the demons Ooh, mm -hmm. sounds dark. <laughs> I, I mean you know it's it's cheesy like the acting isn't great and it's like horror comedy mixed involved with it but i i don't know for some reason that movie always stuck with 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 me is my favorite one really mm -hmm. huh. Okay, I'm gonna have to watch that. It's called The Night of the Demons. Yeah, yeah. There, there's like two. There, there was the one that was made in like 1988 or 89, and then the re, the re, the reboot in like 2000 something that sucked. The the one the reboots watch like always <laughs> suck. They always suck. That's my opinion. They are always worse. I don't know why they do them. Exactly. <laughs> And um, lastly, is like where can fans follow you if they want to check 
check out your music, your acting, your modeling, your sports. Your- <laughs> yeah. Um, you could follow me on Instagram, William Wiggins with two S's at the end. So it's W I L L I A M W I G G I N S S. Um, and then what else? I mean, TikTok. I have a TikTok account. I don't post that much anymore, but I used to post a lot on it. I might try and start posting more, but uh, that's <laughs> that's uh, my nickname, White Smoke Ten. Whoa, so, I like that. Yeah, that that was just like a funny, cheesy nickname my friends and basketball teammates called me back in the back in the day in high school. But um, I say back in the day like it was a long time ago. I just graduated high school <laughs> like two years ago, but. <laughs> um yeah so follow me on instagram mostly that's where i am and my music is just look up william wiggins so hopefully you can find that um and i'll be dropping a song soon so stay tuned well when yeah. you drop the song i'll definitely love for you to come back and talk about it oh yeah i would love to talk about it this one's gonna be my best one by far so i'm excited i'm excited for it okay body sweet man well I don't want to hold you up anymore, but thank, thank you for doing this. And it was so much fun meeting you and chatting and I'm definitely yeah. down to see a concert with you too. So yeah, definitely, definitely stay, stay in touch. Yeah. Thank you so much Rocco Cross for having me. <laughs> this, this has really been a great conversation and I'm glad that we got to talk um, just about oh my God, and yes. everything in between. So definitely, definitely. We'll have to do this again. We'll do this again soon. Yeah very soon <laughs> my man all right <laughs> well, take care everybody you too thank you so much bye